What's up, everybody, and welcome to... Lasagna. Lasagna. That's right. Lasagna. Welcome to Deadpan Diaries, episode number five. Uh, still have it memorized. I'll never memorize the, the full name of this show, but I'll, I'll try at some point. Um, thank you. Yeah, welcome. We have our first guest ever, actually, so I'm having to break my brain open and, and try to, a different introduction, but it's just been Bronze and I talking about guests for five weeks, and now we finally actually found someone stupid enough to come on the show and talk with us. So, uh, Nero, welcome to the conversation, man. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, I'm honored to be able to share my ignorance with the rest of the world. <laughs> I mean, that's being a streamer. That's our that's yep. our life. Yep. Before we get into the topic and stuff like that, I always like to start with uh, kind of catching up with everybody and seeing where they're at. So, Bronze, it's been a whole week. And in that week, you attended WonderCon, which I believe to be a collection of uh, fa fairies and, and ethereal creatures that come together to dictate the pace of the world. Is that correct? That is 100% correct. And Good. I was there uh, as, you know, an obligatory green skin to right. loot, pillage, pillage, and rape. So Very good. Because it's not a good week unless I shit on a fairy's parade. So. No, I don't think that's. I think that's a, a fair way to measure life in general. Did you have a good con though? It was fun. It was down in Anaheim, which is like what decent yeah. weather right now. Yeah, I actually really like Anaheim because I used to live in this place called Vancouver, Washington, yeah. like by Portland, and it reminds me of that in in weird way. It's like a bigger version of Vancouver, Washington. Like it's very oh. suburbia in some ways. It's like kind of cozy. Like I can see myself living in Anaheim. And that's weird. But it's like it's like a safe place. I don't know how to describe it. Um but yeah actually I liked it. The con I, this is my first time at WonderCon. So it was like it was actually interesting to go. It seems like a really relaxed version of Comic Con, which yeah. I liked. Um and then my dumbass after murdering my feet at WonderCon was like, let's go to Disneyland. And then I murdered my feet further at Disneyland. And after we're done here, which is why we started early, because I had to reschedule with my trainer, I had to go to the gym. So that'll be, <laughs> as long as she doesn't make me do calf raises or anything like that, I think we're good. <laughs> but Monday gym trainer is pretty day. brave anyways. After travel, I find the gym very difficult to get to. I need it because I, I just like, I, I feel so... Uh, like it's my way of like mentally de-stressing after like yeah. uh, after being cooped up in planes and and stuff like that. I really like switching gears and and like going to the gym asap and getting back into my routine because every time I travel, I feel like I eat garbage, you know, because oh, yeah. it's just so hard to eat well when you're traveling. And then I'm like, okay, well, I need to like make up for this somehow. And so I try to get back in the gym, get back in my routine ASAP. Otherwise I'll just like slip down a slope. Don't let me forget. Cause it's just introductions. Well, let's talk about that too. Cause I think traveling mm -hmm. and eating is actually something really worth discussing. Cause we, you know, everyone does that, not just us, but everybody on some capacity, yeah, but sure. I find that super hard as well. Anyways, that was a really good almost segue, but I'm not going to let you do it. Cause we got to also say <laughs> Nero. Hello. Uh, for people that don't know, but everyone, I'm almost everyone in, in my channel is going to know who Nero is for sure. Uh, maybe Bronze community is a little bit new to him, but he's a StarCraft II streamer, awesome guy. I would say, and Nero, you can correct me if I'm wrong, I'd say he specializes or focuses on kind of the mental aspect of strategic gaming in StarCraft and very zen stream. If you tune in, there's a lot of conversation about thought process and, and working on yourself as a person. Does that sound accurate at all? Yeah, cognitive science and poker were the two main springboards that got me into the Nero role on Twitch. The aspect that we can talk about a lot today is my athletics that mm -hmm. I've been involved in growing up and the major impressions that coaches had in my life and how you have sports that allow you to express yourself, but also improve upon yourself and build character. So it's basically bringing mindfulness to gaming where I saw a major lack in mindfulness. And if you're trying to be competitive on Twitch, you have to find your niche. That's my niche that I'm really trying to hit. Yeah. Very cool. So, I mean, it's even being tied to him as a professional streamer, but uh, you can kind of already hear just the focus and what we're talking about with uh, having some kind of mindset towards physical fitness and how it can benefit you as a human being in general, both as a streamer as a person. I guess with that, we'll kind of spring right into the conversation. So this is... The... I'm excited because it's a little tiny segue. Yes. I met Neuro briefly at TwitchCon. He was just such a cool person. Yeah. And uh, a bunch of people came to my meet and greet and they were like, Neuro says nice things about you. And I was like, what? This dude is like the fucking nicest. So I just wanted to say that before we got started. He's yeah. like a legitimately very like cool, laid back person. And that's kind of rare on Twitch. A lot of people are like kind of like 
wound up tight. He's always like really mm-hmm. laid back, which somebody like me always appreciates that. Cause when people are all like, Oh my God, Hey, what's up? And I'm like, please. No. <laughs> well, one thread that we have between the three of us is interacting with trolls. A lot of streamers choose to avoid a lot of confrontation, whereas we each, I think, prefer to engage in some way. My way, I think, tends to be more, I try to be calm and collected as much as I can. I would say the thing that really excited me about your stream is you fight fire with fire. A lot of times (laughs) they'll attack you and then you attack them like twice as hard. And it's like, holy (laughs) shit. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, it's true. I go balls deep, man. Yeah. The first talk I think of in control that really jumped out at me was when there's a guy who's just hassling you about your career and then you brought him into a call and you roast him about how much he emphasizes his success in his career and he just basically caved and he's like, no, actually I'm not progressing. I'm not working as hard as I can. And all the wind is gone from his sails and he can go reevaluate his life. One more sea, it's one more starfish thrown back out in the ocean, you guys. Chicken noodle soup for the soul. Make sure you read that, okay? <laughs> That's old school. Um, so yeah, getting into the topic. This is going to be the gym episode like we kind of talked about. Uh, I'll, I think we'll probably, when I pass it over, we'll start off with kind of our various different backfields, backgrounds. I think backgrounds is a better term here. Uh, none of us are professional fitness people. I will I will put that out. So if, if someone wants to be like really quick, like none of you guys are trainers. That's fine. Uh, this is actually more accessible, I would say. These are people that are, you know, go to the gym a lot or emphasize or like are very conscientious of their health, um, but have different journeys and different paths there. Um, and that's going to be kind of the, the mindset of this. We're going to talk a little bit about that. But then I really want to open it up to conversations in the chat. So unfortunately, if you're listening to this as the podcast or if you're watching this on YouTube, there, of course, is no way to participate in this episode alone. But if you do make a comment on YouTube, I'll be sure to, to read those and hopefully these guys will as well. And we can kind of try to do our best that way. Um, otherwise, it's going to be mostly the live chat here and, and hopefully that makes for a good show. So we're just going to talk about that for like an hour, hour and a half and then call it a day. And that's the plan. So let's start. Uh, Nero has some fantastic notes. Before we get into the kind of specific notes, I do want to just do a quick, quick-ish quick talk about your path uh, with physical fitness and, and where it is at in your life, where it's been, that kind of thing, just to give a little bit of background before we get into the nitty-gritty of each one. And Bronze, we'll start with you. So talk a little bit about where fitness has been for you for, throughout your mm-hmm. life, I guess. Well, I think for chat, I'm probably going to be the most relatable for like the most casual of people because I, I'm very new to it. Um, I've struggled with fitness for most of my life. Um, I feel like I, I was, when I was younger, I used to be into dance and things like that. And then when I got older, a lot of those things fell off. Mm-hmm. And I hit this point in my life where I developed a really unhealthy relationship with food. I am like what a per, what you call like an emotional eater. And it's yeah. very like a, like a psychosomatic thing. Like people think it's like, oh, I'm going to cry. I need a pint of ice cream. Now we're talking about like I physically felt hungry like mm. a lot. And I would eat like disgusting amounts of food and then feel terrible about myself and eat more disgusting amounts of food. And then I would go through periods where I would like jump back into fitness, but it was always motivated by weight. So I have my weight has unhealthily rubber banded most of my mm. life. Um, most of the time when I would recommit to my fitness, it was, or to, to fitness, I should say, it was never in a, uh, consistent way. Like, I feel like I'd always jump in way too hard and start going like five, six days a week and cut down to a 1200 calorie diet and this, that, and the other eventually plateau, get depressed, give up, balloon up again, and then come back. But as of 10 months ago, so I said fairly new, um, well, I should start further than that about a year ago. Uh, made a commitment to my stream that if we hit a, this donation goal for the Fred Hutchinson Cancer Society, that I was going to participate in their marathon to climb the Space Needle. So okay. I trained for that, uh, climbed it, made good time, which I was very excited about. It was like my very first marathon and then kind of built that base of cardiovascular health where about 10 months ago, I started working with a trainer and got into lifting. And that has changed my life because it's such a positive way to view something that I viewed so negatively before. Because before it was all about the weight on the scale, burning as many calories as possible. And like I did spin classes, I did bar, I did Pilates, I did everything. 
um, boot camps and, and, you know, Tabata and hit exercises. But then with lifting, I've, I've developed a very positive relationship hmm. with working out. I've been incredibly consistent. I've been going between two to three days a week for, for 10 months now. Um, in June, you know, uh, we're, I'm going to do like my, my weigh in for, I think it's going to be like my slightly over a year weigh in, but we, I weighed in last time on my birthday. So I'm really excited for that. And it's just been a, it's been a positive thing that I've been able to keep up with and I look forward to doing. So nice. that's my, it's my weird ass journey. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, bronze. Nero, what about you? So I'm a Texas boy, and one of the aspects of being a young man in Texas is either you play American football or you have a doctor's note. Every, <laughs> every single person does. We have a class of, say, 350 boys, and it's so many that they have to have multiple teams. So you have A team, B team, and C team from best to worst, but everyone does it. It's a big part of the culture down here. A lot of times parents will be looking around for schools in a school district and they'll say, which one has the best football program? Mm -hmm. So it's very integral to the culture here. And being an athlete is a major part of everyone's identity. You learn a lot of different skills. It kind of depends on the coaches and the kids who you play with. But I had a few coaches that made very major impressions on how I viewed exercise, not just as a means to compete and try to win, but also how to build character and how that's the most important thing that you can take away for the rest of your life, it's not your record that year in school. It's the times that you demonstrated to yourself that you can get up at six in the morning, get out in the ice and the snow and just punish yourself and make it through and be a stronger person at the end of it. So football was a big aspect. I played strong safety. That was my best position when I finally made it to a team. I did learn an important life lesson as well about friendship and also clicks. I used to be a B team kid and then I got promoted to a team and all the bullying that I received stopped once I got to that point. Mm. So that told me a lot about different social circles and how you have true friends. And then you also have conditional friendship. This happens in a lot of society, but football was a place where I learned that sort of lesson. And track was also a major aspect. My parents met on the track team. Oh, cool. So we're kind of a running family. I ran a marathon after university just to see if I could. It was a really good experience. I think you can learn a lot about yourself doing that. And then this past year, I've been focusing primarily on lifting. But in my family, one thing that we were kind of pushed to do was be well-rounded. I'm nerdy by default. I'm happy just playing games and reading books and stuff. And they said, no, you need to be well-rounded. You need to pick a sport and do something physical with your body. So it's kind of always been a thing. And I think it's easier to stay fit than it is to become fit from mm. being idle. Very cool. Okay. Uh, for me, a little bit similar. It's kind of a mix and match, I guess. Uh, always played sports my whole life. Um, usually very good, but varying degrees of terrible. My whole family sucks at basketball, for instance, but we all played it until you basically hit that point where if you do suck, they stop asking you to be on team. So it was like middle school for me. Um, but I was very good at football, so I, my high school, uh, O'Day High School in Washington is one of the best football programs in Washington. Same kind of thing as Texas, but not nearly to the same cultural level, but that school is like a football school. It's just, that's why you go there. And then I started as a sophomore on the uh, varsity team and was captain senior year and all state and stuff like that. So I, I did very well for myself. Um, and as such, just always been very physically conscientious. I've always been pretty naturally strong, so that's always been a part of my identity. Um, so it's kind of interesting that as a young person, when you have that identity, enhancing that seems like a, a fun and cool idea just naturally. Like I don't have any story of like my parents forced me to go to the gym or certain coaches were like, you need to get in the gym. It was nothing like that. It was just, it was always fun for me to get stronger. It was always fun for me to get bigger because I was always, I was always kind of naturally that way anyways. Um, and then in college, I got swept up under the wing of a guy who was a power lifter because uh, I would just, it was kind of funny because I would walk in like freshman or sophomore year. And like I said, I was always naturally strong. I never really weight trained that much, but I would go up to the bench and in my complete uneducation of bench pressing, I would put 350 on and then just do that for like three reps of 10 uh, to warm up. And then they saw me doing that and they're like, what do you, you know, what the hell are you doing? And I was like, I don't know, that seems like a lot of weight. And they're like, it is a lot of weight, but why are you doing it that way? And I'm like, I don't know. So he, he like took me under his wing and trained me in powerlifting for a couple of years. And 
that was huge because in the first couple of years of that, like I said, uh, that's that's where I learned how to power lift, and that was my new competition. I really enjoyed that. I have short little T Rex arms, so I'm actually really good at bench pressing because my stroke is not that high. And then uh, I have really strong tendons and joints as well, so um, it just kind of naturally worked out that way. And my best was with the bench shirt. I benched 700 pounds. And there's a video on YouTube of me uh, benching raw. 435. So it's pretty good lifts for a young man. Um, and then since then, I've just been weightlifting for maintenance more than anything else. Because uh, if you're not powerlifting with a team of people, um, it's really, really hard to do at, at a higher level. So rather than injure myself over and over again, I'm just kind of now weightlifting for maintenance. But I've been weightlifting and doing general fitness stuff since I was, you know, 20 or something like that. And I'm now 33. So I've been doing it a long time. Um, up and down though. So like, uh, certain parts of my life, I'm like, I'm strong. I don't need to go to the gym. And then it'd be like oh, four months went by. Oh my God. But the, I've been lifting every day since, uh, August of last year. So I'm going on a pretty good streak right now, but, um, motivation. That's, that's where it becomes really good. It's a good way to handle your emotions. A good way to take care of yourself. If you're mentally struggling, that's been me. So that Out of is curiosity. What yeah. position did you play in football? I was defensive tackle. Nice. Yeah, I got a hilarious question in my chat about a week and a half ago. Yeah. They said, Neuro, can you bench press more than in control? And my first thought was actually like a RPG sort of thing where yeah. I see myself as a rogue and you're like a barbarian. <laughs> it's like, do you have more of a strength yeah. score than a barbarian? No, that's not my class. <laughs> yeah. Okay, if you're a rogue and he's a barbarian, then I just have to straight up be a caster. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. wizard it's just funny because you were talking about how you view yourself and what's funny about that jeff is like i'm the opposite mm. so everybody else viewed me as something that i wasn't so i'm, I'm five foot seven and i mm. hit that when i was like 12 so i was always in basketball and i was always like a power forward because i'm just so fucking tall i was taller than most of the boys in my class and then everybody else hit their growth spurt and mm -hmm. it evened out. But then I moved to India and I'm five foot seven is very tall for India as well. Yep. And I, I like graduated valedictorian. I was always a book nerd. So my parents never really got on me for sports stuff, but my teachers did. And so they would always be like, look at your physique. You're so athletic. And I'd be like, bitch, I can't do a fucking long jump. And they'd be like, look at you. Look at those legs. Why would God, would God give you such a long leg if you can't jump like that? And that has become a meme in my chat, the physique. Because they always be like, look at your physique. And I always looked athletic. So they had these like crazy expectations of me. Mm -hmm. And then they would see me do the long jump and the high jump. And they would be like, why has God done this? Given you that <laughs> body? <laughs> you know, like, you just don't yeah. have the... It was, it was the opposite. Everybody else was like, you, do you play field hockey? You play field hockey? Like the, some, you gotta have something. You're so gangly. Nope. Oh, nope. Funny. There's no power there. There's just no <laughs> and nothing there. It was truly unfortunate. I was the shame of my whole house. <laughs> it's, it's kind of scary to me uh, as a quick, as, as an aside, because like, it's funny how all three of us have that various different story of like, teenage high school age ish people kind of being like you should do this because you look like this type of thing and i know everyone has stories like that but for me it was a lot of like the wrestling coaches harassed me for four years they're like you need to be a wrestler you, you have an incredible body for wrestling but what ends up actually being really funny is that i'm actually very inflexible like i'm i'm actually as as physically fit as i am i'm that equal part unflexible like i just i can only, i can i can touch my toes so it's not like it's the, this ridiculous story but for the most part, I like if I, I did can't. yoga, it looked comical. What's that? I can't. You can't touch your toes? No. Okay. We have something we have something similar in our inflexibility, <laughs> I suppose. But like there's other ways to be flexible, of course. But um anyways, it's just funny because it just looked like I should do this thing. And they weren't like mean, there's no nasty story about it. Um, but then even in baseball, like I eventually bulked up to a point where my baseball my my batting swing was pretty bad because I just kind of had the wrong muscles for it basically. Um, and again, I, I, I had really good mentors and really good coaches. So they never made me feel terrible about it, but I have stories in my life too, of like various different mentors or, or whoever that like were really harsh about these things. Like you should do this cause you look like that. And it's actually stuck with me my entire life. So I, like I said, it's a quick, it's an aside, 
But how scary is it to be a fucking teacher or a parent or whatever it is? Because you can say like one weird thing to a kid and they can remember mm-hmm. it till they're 35 fucking years old, dude. It's like, oh, yeah. It's like, yeah, you carry it around with you. I don't want to say like, anything to kids ever. Yeah. Everyone expects me to be this thing and I'm not this thing. And it, it actually did. This is like kind of deep, but it did permanently warp my view of myself. Yeah. Like I'm still like that where other girls always thought they were cutesy. Never viewed myself that way. I always viewed myself as like more of a Mulan and less of like a, you know, like yeah. and I I was a tomboy growing up because never viewed myself as like feminine and cutesy. No, always viewed myself as like some kind of warrior because yep. that's what people always expected of me. I didn't feel like I had the luxury to be sensitive or anything like that because that wasn't like people were like, oh, she's she'd yeah. be great at this. She could probably pitch a tent and go camping. And in the meantime, I'm like, I hate being dirty because I was like, you know, 11 and I don't like bugs and I, but bees are scary. And we went on this camping trip to California Redwoods and like every, all the other girls got coddled. But people were like, that's Jasmine. She's fine. She's like a little monkey. She can climb trees and stuff. And I'd be like, I don't like bees. They scare me. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not going to tell anybody because they expect me to be brave. Yeah. Oh, my God. Uh, Zarafil, that's the funny thing about this. Like, not that you're doing anything wrong, but that's what we're talking about. Like, uh, he was saying he's a teacher, so he's very conscientious about being positive and intentional with advice and that's awesome and that is the better way to do it but what's also kind of funny and again not that what you're doing does this but i've also and we all have we now encounter people that were never criticized or treated harshly or um were told that they were doing something probably wrong you know like it i i know a number of people that like handle conflict really poorly because their whole life they were always right or they were like the good kid that had good intentions and and then it comes into adult life and it's like hey guess what that thing that you thought you're doing okay actually really hurt someone's feelings and they're like well that's not possible because i had good intentions and you're like no nah, but you still hurt their feelings like, not my problem i was trying to be good and you're like oh shit you're a demon aren't you like, mm-hmm. yeah i'm a little bit i've had i've heard people say that though like well i'm not responsible for other people's like oh emotions. i'm not making that like, up that's a real thing yeah 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 and you're just kind of sitting there like well, you're not like, you know, you're not, you are because what you said created that. Yeah. Now you can choose not to care hundred percent. That's your fucking prerogative. I'm not going to sit here and care about every Tom, Dick and Harry's uh, feelings on something I say, but you know, it's like when it's somebody you care about, like a, like a friend and they're oh, like, yeah. Oh, well it's like, okay, well then you should care. Right. Like I've dealt with that in relationships too. Oh yeah. I mean, that's the first <laughs> place you experience it. The, oh Yeah. Well, yeah, not naming names. It's just, it's a tough one. I think uh, for me, just being a pragmatist, it's inescapable how illogical it is, though. Like, you ever tried, and everyone has, you ever tried to explain to someone that they had no right feeling bad about something? <laughs> like, how many times have you ever been successful where you're like, no, here's what I meant. Here's how you took it. And can you see why you're wrong to feel that way? Has anyone ever been like, Jesus, you're right. All right. I, I'm totally better now. It never, ever works out that way. It's always like, the easiest path ever is to be like, even if, again, you don't think you did something wrong, just be like, oh, all right, I'm sorry. I didn't mean it that way, but I'm, I feel bad that it hurt your feelings. I'll try to do better. No, no, I feel better. We're way off topic, but that's just a. <laughs> so let's get into the gym talk here a little bit, okay? So, Nero, you've uh, you've prepared some notes to kind of steer us a little bit. Why don't you, you have a launching point you want to go into first? I do have a launching point, and Great. it's actually a point of consistent frustration from our 21st century perspective. Okay. So, Humans, as an organism, have been anatomically the same for a long time. A Boring. long time. Yeah. But uh, That we know so, of, right? There could be mutants out there. I'm excited about the potential. There could be mutants. I mean, technically, mutation is the driving force of evolution, so we're all mutants. Yep. But, but anyways, I have an excerpt from Steven Pinker's How the Mind Works, and it gives us some context for kind of a launching pad of how we're evolved by natural selection to succeed as hunter-gatherers. So he says, the mind is a system of organs of computation designed by natural selection to solve the kinds of problems our ancestors faced in their foraging way of life. In particular, understanding and outmaneuvering objects, animals, plants, and other people. So specifically noting that we're trying to outmaneuver stuff and understand it, and how if you're sitting in an office chair all the time, you're not maneuvering shit. You're idle constantly. And if you notice how a dog gets ornery, if you don't give it exercise, we're animals too. We're hunter-gatherers who had a daily rhythm 
of going out into the world, solving problems, jumping over stuff, fighting things, running away from stuff, hunting down animals. Like if this is missing, it makes a whole bunch of sense that people would have a bunch more stress and frustration. This sort of depression epidemic, to give an aside, I'm not a mental health expert or professional, so this is not my yeah. uh, professional assertion, but I'm suspicious that a big part of this rise in depression is a neglect of our kind of original way of living, yeah. our original rhythm. And social media, but I fully agree with you otherwise, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I, would, I, would, I would say it's probably a mixture of both. And, and for the longest time, I uh, always felt like the freedom to do, like to engage in physical sort of recreation was something that was like reserved for people who had time for that shit. Because when you work a nine to five, mm-hmm. the idea of, of working out after that and the cost of a gym membership and this, that, we always come up with reasons why we can't, right? right. But like, it was daunting because we work like 40, 50, 60 hour weeks yep. where we, we are incredibly sedentary. And then it's like the idea of adding on physical work to that is like daunting for a lot of people. Can I jump in Nero? or did I cut you off before you finish your point? No, you can jump in. So what I, what really, res, what really resounds with me with this is, uh, and again, I think there's going to be a little bit of, Everyone knows that kind of thing, but I think it might still be beneficial for some people to hear this. Um, Literally just changing, like just doing different activities has been a life altering and enhancement of a good thing. Uh, A lot of us can sit in a computer chair all day and they'll be like, well, the other thing I'm going to go do is watch a TV show to unwind, or I'm going to read a book laying in bed. And I think those are all various different good things to do, but they're not really that different, right? Like you're usually sitting or you're usually looking at a screen or you're kind of in your house. For me, going to the gym, and it's as silly as my condo's gym, which is, you know, a thousand, 200 yards away, something like that. It's not very far, um, but it's outside my building. It's across the the property and it's in a different room and it's, it's open lit and it's just around other people. Um, and then it's doing something physically active is enough to keep me um, changing up what I do in a day and not just being inside of a dark ish room in front of a screen. And especially, and again, just to continuously kind of talk about my own personal experience, but as someone that's been struggling with mental health and happiness and that kind of stuff, this has been gigantic. It's a, it's been absolutely amazing and it's been absolutely huge for me to combat those things and to feel good about myself. Uh, And again, I think everyone's heard that message of like, wow, working out makes you feel good about yourself. I've never heard that. Jeff, it's like, oh, I know. But I want to tie that into what Bronze talked about too, which is like, we have all the reasons not to do these things. And it can be cost. It can be prohibitive. It can be, I have three kids. Where the hell do I find the time? I get that. But if you're not doing those things, I would so strongly push you in the direction of trying to put some of that in there. And it can be as simple as body weight exercises. But I really strongly recommend trying to change the venue of which you do these things. Um, maybe some of you, probably most of you, work like nine to fives outside of your house. So you're changing where you go all the time. And that's not as big of an issue for you. That's cool. For me personally, if I didn't work out or play Warhammer, I would be here in like the same 100 by 100 square feet all day. Except for when I go get sh- groceries. And some people order like off of Amazon. So they don't even do that. So for me, it's been huge and life-changing i feel like you're bringing up a really good point though which is that and i'm sure like and let me let me know if if you disagree if either of you disagree but i feel like twitch streamers have probably the most like emotionally and physically unhealthy lifestyles way um i I really do and i i know a few people in ems who tell me that they take youtubers and twitch streamers via ambulance all the time and part of it is is i think that a lot of these people and people like who are who are obsessed with social media in general don't have that like disconnect. But going outside, going for a run for me, even this is before even Twitch will get me out of my head because I used to bring work home with me all the time. I'd be so pissed at Becky or Susan or Karen or whatever the fuck this that or the other bitch did at work. And I'd come home and fume about that. And it's like I'm not even being paid. To, to, to worry about it, but I'm sitting at home and it's ruining my free time too. But then I would go for a run. There's something very animal about it in some ways. There's something about like getting back to like doing this like basic thing 
where you don't give a shit about Becky or Karen or Susan. Cause you're you, just, you're, you're that heart- perfectly ties into our original hunting method. Do you know what that was? Spears so wh- and <laughs> running. <laughs> yeah. Why were we the successful hunter on the plains of Africa? The reason is we're not faster than an antelope, but we can jog at an easy pace and track in the heat of midday. And we sweat instead of panting. So we can jog and sweat and keep taking steps. The antelope eventually is going to pass out from heat exhaustion. We can track, we can get to it, we can stab it. That's a massive meal for your whole tribe. Hmm. There are still tribes that hunt this way. So it's very dishonest for people to say, I'm not a runner. Like physiologically speaking, that's the thing that we're best at is energy efficiency and informational management. So our heads are up high. We can see pretty far over the grass. We're pretty smart. We can read clues from the ground and we can keep going, not fast. We're not faster than a wolf or a cheetah, but we can keep going for a long period of time. Additionally, we can walk in a very efficient way. That's why we're on every continent. Because we can walk from Africa to Asia to the Americas. You're fucking blown the long ass now. way. But that's, that's pretty. Tribe, though. My about. tribe didn't do that. We just ordered on Amazon, probably. No, I'm just <laughs> that's amazing. I didn't actually thought of that. That's sick. I like that. Yeah. So I have a little timeline here that I got from uh, that book as well. Most people don't think about how long humans have been a discrete species. And the line is kind of fuzzy. But if you want to measure it by the cubic centimeters of our brain, we've been pretty much anatomically the same for about 400,000 years. So 400,000 years of being upstanding bipeds who use tools, who use fire. And then if you go forward in time a little bit, about 45,000 years ago, gray wolves become our dogs. That's sort of that process of animal Mm -hmm. husbandry. Then we get other animals that kind of work with us. 10,000 years ago is agriculture, and with agriculture comes a great surplus in energy from the food that we can harvest, and that's when we get writing and specialization. So you can have someone who's a full-time warrior. He doesn't have to go out and hunt stuff. He doesn't have to farm. He can just be trained military and be much more excellent in his craft. You have scribes, you have military, you have leaders who are non-combat units, that kind of thing. And then what, 100 years ago, we have industrialization, and then flight, electricity, and then 30 years ago, we have internet. So we've arrived at like the knee of the curve is way past. Now we're just flying into the future with a very different rhythm. But anatomically speaking, we're the same as it's been for a long ass time. And we don't have that in the context of our daily rhythm. We don't have those expectations of, well, I'm a omnivore biped. I should go out and chase an antelope today to fit with my biological rhythm. Like Bronze was saying with Twitch streamers and YouTubers being hospitalized, it's effectively solitary confinement. Yeah. If you don't get your ass out the door, that's like being in a cage. And that's not healthy for the body. Yes, you're not exerting force. You're not impacting with the ground. But to an extent, that's really healthy for making sure all of our systems are in use. It's kind of like when your uh, com- old computer gets super dusty, if it's never brought out and stuff, and it's kind of going to shit, your body does that too on the yep. inside. I think this is the other way to motivate that we were talking about. Like I was trying to kind of come from the love feel good approach of like, this has made me feel really good. The other side of this is you will just actually feel like shit if you don't do it. So it's a little bit of the like, do this because it makes you feel good. And if someone's like, you know what? Not compelled by that. Then be like, well, it also will just make you feel like shit if you don't. And you're like, ah, damn. So, uh, and it's various degrees too. Like, like, uh, Nero went and ran a fucking marathon. Listen, I'm not going to run a marathon, but... (laughs) Uh, if you, if you, if like running is your thing, then start off slow, start off somewhere, do any of it at all. Cause that's the, God, I wish I actually should have prepared for the show better. It was uh Terry Cruz. I quote this a lot, but it's one of my favorite lines ever. And I, and I actually, because I don't have the quote in front of me, I'm going to miss say this, but essentially what, so he gets asked all the time cause he's this ridiculously muscular fit guy. That's always kind of espousing fitness. Someone asked him, what's your number one piece of advice? And he always, his go-to answer is get into the habit. Just go do it. Like whatever it is. I don't care if you're going to start off with, I'm going to do 10 push-ups a day. I don't care if it's, I'm going to go run one lap around the track. I don't, whatever it is, just do it and make that your habit. Because most people with this kind of stuff, they put it on a pedestal way over there. And they're like, I can't, uh, eventually I'll get to it. Thursday, I'm going to start. 
uh, you know, I, I need the better clothes first. Well, my ankle's kind of bummed, so I'm not going to do it just yet. Like, there will always be something that gets in the way. Bronze gave a bunch of lists earlier. Just do it. Just set the habit. And that's been pretty big for me as well. Like, I, I kind of found what works for me. I used to go to a gym in Oakland, uh, but it was just a little bit too far away. The parking was just a little bit too much of a pain in the ass. So what happened was on some days I'd be like, gosh, I'm a little bit sore from my last workout and I don't really want to do the parking. So you know what? Ah, I'll do it Friday. I'll, I'll figure it out. And then those excuses stacked up and I just started to not really go consistently. And I felt bad about it and kind of added stress to my life because I'm like, I'm not going to the gym. And Ugh. it just was this bad thing. So I've found what works, which is a less optimal gym, but one that I will go to every single day because literally there's just no excuse to stop me from walking to my condo gym and making it work. And that's been great for me. So I think that like everybody has to find something that works for them. I yeah. think I'm, sh I'm sure that it's like very intimidating to see three reasonably fit people sit here and tell you, you should get off the couch and do something like Chet, I get it. Um, but you have to find something that works for you. Like for me, I, I did not, it's, it's intimidating to start running when you can't run. Um, I started with the couch to 2k and that really helped me. Cause it's just this like app you download on your phone. It's free. And it's like, Oh, run for a short period of time and then walk for a longer period of time. And that helped me get there. But it was like intimidating when I started to just be like, okay, I'm going to run a mile and not being able to run a mile, like running for 10 yeah. seconds and being completely out of breath. So one of the things I did when I first started was I hiked a lot because I live in Washington state. It's beautiful out here. Absolutely gorgeous. So I would just walk at my own pace and I just go for a hike, a nice, easy six mile hike. I'd make a day of it. Something I look forward to have friends come along. And from there I built once again, that base level of fitness, because that is what it comes down to yeah. is. And I was talking about this on my stream a little bit as well, where it's like, it's, I understand where your intimidation comes from because when you're looking at different at home workouts to do, cause let's say you're not ready to commit to a gym membership. You're not sure you're going to make it every day. And it's like, do 10 squats and you can't because even the range of motion for a squat is not mm. attainable for everyone. The first thing I'd recommend is looking for like modifications on those things. Sure. Cause if, if there's a workout, that's like do 10 pushups and you can't even do one that's really defeating to just start out with. And it makes you feel like reaching that base level of fitness will be the hardest thing that you do, but it'll be one of the best things you do for yourself. In my opinion. Yep. If I can say something in praise of walking, it's like every couple of months, there's a new study that comes out that talks about either the cognitive or the health benefits of walking, which seems like a trivial exercise that involves yeah. some difficulty, but it does engage a lot of muscular systems. It does put a nice amount of strain on your joints where they can exercise themselves and strengthen without really challenging you too much. And it also gives you a moment away, if you can put your phone down for two seconds, to just think about what's ahead in life, process where you've been. Mm -hmm. There's a big aspect of stress for a lot of people in that they never pull themselves away. My mom would say, you need to unplug from all the different electronics and stuff that are around you and just notice the trees. Just go for a walk and think about your day, what you could have done better, think about what you're gonna do tomorrow, and just give yourself a little bit of freedom. It's a big deal. Mentally and physically. I talk a lot of shit about Europeans, but I'll, this is a chance to be complimentary. I think that's one place where they've got it pretty damn right. Obviously not the entire continent of Europe, but specifically like, like Dutch culture is very bicycle oriented, but also very like, you know, well, it's a six block walk. Let's just, you know, we're going to go do it. Like, it's just a little bit more that way. Um, Americans are a lot of like, let's Uber, or let's drive, let's ride. And that's not every American or every European, but just I've noticed in my travels, it just seems to be much more walking and biking is, is kind of accepted in Europe. It does lead to Birkenstocks and fanny packs. So you got to be careful about that. But uh, it does seem to be much more of a centering thing. And they're just generally more fit if you do that. Because again, it's funny how it can kind of sneak by you, right? Like if you get in your car and drive to work, you walk up the building, but you take the elevator, you come back home, park, take the elevator up to your place or whatever, walk to the front door, sit down. Think about how little walking that is in a day, right? Like that's actually kind of scary. Uh, for me personally, like I said, I, I'm here. That's my bedroom. You can see in the background, like way back there, that dark little thing that, that leads into my bedroom. If I don't walk around, if I, if I don't go do things, it's like... It's like 45 square feet of walking. It's like I'm a, I'm a veal human. Uh, I feel like careful. you're right when it comes to like a cultural thing, though, because yeah. I get the weirdest fucking I've been like yelled at by groups of people when they're like, I'm like, oh, we can just walk. 
when they're here for like packs or something in Seattle. I'm like, yeah, it's not far. And then like literally like six blocks and they'll be like, it's not far. <laughs> I'm like, oh, come on. I'm that guy to be fair. I apologize. Yeah, it's. That's... Are you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> It's not fun. I'm like, oh, come on. We've been walking for all of 12 minutes. You know, I don't mind walking. I hate it when we, when people go to bars and walk everywhere, which is totally counterproductive to what we're talking about right now. But like when they're like, Mm -hmm. let's go to this bar, then walk six blocks to the other one. Anyways, I don't like that. Oh, I don't. I'm not really much of a bar hopper, but I'm the type of person like if I only have to pick up a couple of things, I'll walk to the grocery store. Good. Well, I think to Nero's point, just find what you can and. The unplugging part's a big part too. Like this is the gym episode, but uh, I think that's almost another way to enhance this. Like again, for me, when I'm in the gym, I'm not, I try to be not on my phone, not checking Twitter, not checking Instagram, just like just kind of in the moment, breathing and 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 being out there. I listen to, I listen to music when I work out. That's kind of my thing. It just gets me motivated. But unplugging, finding yourself, thinking, being in your thoughts, it's actually hugely important. That's a big part of it. Uh, but you have if other you can points. Take oh, a fun ahead. music aside. What kind of music do you listen to when you lift? Any bands always, that jump out? Always metal. Like right now, it's been a lot of Slipknot actually, because uh, I lift angry for the most part, which might not work for everyone. But um, if I, 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 I don't know. Like, my, like I said, my physical identity comes from sports, and it comes from being strong. So, in powerlifting and stuff like that, uh, what got it, what got me to lift that extra weight that maybe the day before was nailed down would be adrenaline and being fired up and when i say angry i don't like think to myself like god i hate the socioeconomic status of the middle class right now like i'm not like actually focusing on something getting mad it's more of a just like this song is a is called people equal shit and it just fires you up and it's about being mad so it helps with lifting for me oh yeah i slap the shit out of myself before i do there bench press or squat so it's kind of similar amon amarth would probably be the main artist that i would list for getting fired up you listen to music bronze I listen, I'm like the opposite of y'all. I usually listen shit? to like, I listen to like 80s, like the, like the, yeah. like just the, the bounciest, happiest 80s music ever. Have you, you tried know? metal? I have actually, oh. I have, but usually when I go for like, I don't know, for me, when I work out, I enjoy like slipping into that physical nature of it in the sense mm. of like. You know, and I, I I think about that when I'm when I'm like stuck, when I'm like feel like I'm not going to hit my my goals that day. I like breathe deep, close my eyes and I'm like, you know what? I can't change a lot of things about my life, but I can move this bar two inches. And that's like usually what I it's like. I ah, I can't change I like that. that. I can't change the situation of my life and all the things I've done wrong and how terrible my human, my human existence is, but I can move this bar two inches. That's something I can change. And then I do it and I'm like, ah, it's like a weight has been lifted off quite literally. It's just like, you know, really? That's yeah. interesting. Okay. Yeah. I've heard of other people that do that as well, but I just, I, I can't, if it's I'm like pushing a, it's for a personal record, pain, bench pressing, I like, can't imagine being calm. That'd be crazy. Oh, I just embrace it. But but I come from a yoga background. Oh. So like there's something you like I love embracing the discomfort. Like I think I used to have this German friend when I went to college and he always be like, pain is good. You know, he'd always say that. And every time I used to ask him, like, what do you mean pain is, is good? He'd always be like, you know, you, pain equals growth. Like whether it's emotional I love that pain. It's a German friend that said this, by the way. So right. Perfect. And he's like, you know, physical pain, any pain you experience is usually like it, that's your body growing, you know, or even emotionally when you're hurt, you're growing. This is a growing experience. Pain is good. And I try to think about that when I'm like, when I, even when I do yoga, like, it, like people, I think, think yoga is super relaxing. That shit fucking hurts. I don't know <laughs> where people get that from. Like it, it hurts. You're like stretching tendons and ligaments that haven't, that are not used to stretching that way and haven't done that a long time and holding those poses is difficult. So you sink down into like almost a meditation and to where you like embrace that suck in like a really fucking major way. You just mm. Mm, relish the suck. And I do that when I, when I lift too, I'm like this, this really fucking hurts. This bar is stuck here mid bench press and I'm not sure I can get it all the way up. And I'm like, let's embrace this. This this hurts. What a moment of struggle I'm having. Wow. Technically that aspect is the most productive part of the lifting cycle, right? Is when you're getting right up to the point of muscle failure. I think they've done the math on the reps leading up to the last rep are worth way less than those final reps. They're worth way more for the process of actually making the gains. 
Yep. Wow. Even though they don't look as satisfying like you're completing something. Oh, they look messy. They look, yeah. they're like the ugliest yeah. ones. Like and, my, and then my trainer will put her hand on, I'm like, don't take my gains. And she's like, <laughs> I feel like you're going to drop it on your face <laughs> here for like four seconds. I'm like, no, I can do it. <laughs> the bronze is even calmer. She's like, it's okay. The struggle is part of what I'm trying to look for. <laughs> she drops on her face. She's like, that's fine too. This, the pain is letting me know that I tried. She's like, you're fucking weird, dude. And you're like, yeah, it's okay. This kind of brings up a useful point too. You shouldn't be expecting for your workouts to look glamorous. You look kind of weak and messed up a lot of the time. If you're actively mm -hmm. challenging yourself, this could be for running. Like if you're running and you're going a little bit faster, maybe a little bit further than you normally would, you look beat. You look kind of messed up and disheveled and tired and stuff. If you're failing a lift, someone walks in and they've only seen you do those last reps that you just failed. Like a lot of times you think about that impression like, oh, I want to look good. Yeah. Fuck that, dude. My Bulgarian split squats, every time I go up and wait, they look they look bad. They're all even like normal lunges. They look shaky. I don't look as elegant. And I always debate them. Like if I went down like 10 pounds, these split squats would look like a, a fitness how to like video, you know, and instead I'm like going like barely like, you know, my trainer's calling me out, putting her hand on my shoulder, being like an extra inch down. I'm like, bitch, I'm going to fucking <laughs> die here. They look so shaky and ugly. But those are the you have to do embrace it. the suck. That is the stuff of progress. I'm glad you said embrace the stuck the the suck because I was going to say that if you didn't. See, I think right? it's from is it Navy Seals? Yes, probably. I yeah. think I, I see armed forces. A lot of different armed forces use it, but embrace the suck. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's uh, big in the adult entertainment industry actually. <laughs> um, <laughs> got him. Got to bring it home. Always got to keep it around those kind of jokes. <laughs> Nero, you got some more notes here, though. Uh, you want to move Hell on? Hell yeah. One? So one thing just to give us an anchor is thinking about the short, medium and long term benefits of exercise because they're pretty different. Some ones that I have listed here already in the short term, better sleep, stress management, alertness and focus. So the sleep one, I think, is kind of self-explanatory you use more of your energy, your body is more prepared to let itself sleep. The stress management one, I think is very apparent for me as a streamer, maybe you too as well, where if I've done something like I've lifted or I've run, when people give me shit in the chat, I've already accomplished something today. Oh, I don't yeah. need to explain stuff to anyone. I've been productive already. And it gives me that kind of confidence and a buffer against being hassled and also losing, having a downswing. I don't care quite as much. I feel like I'm more at peace with my day if I've let more of my stress out. If we can talk a little biology, cortisol is the stress hormone. When you exercise, you're choosing when that comes out in your day. If you don't exercise, it's kind of constantly leaking. And that's why a lot of people just feel that regular stress at work. So stress management is partially controlling where you point your stress hormone. So I should be working out in the morning. I'm, I'm not a fitness expert. Maybe if you did it, I at, prefer at night, night, that would be fine. I think the easy, the easiest answer is do it when you can, right? Like, if you can't work out in the morning, don't be like, "Well, I guess I'm not working out." Just be, you know, get it where you can. A way that I think of it too is a big part of making gains is the repair between workout sessions. And if you've worked out when you're sitting, you're actually being productive just by your body repairing itself yeah. from the thing you already did. I. My biggest thing with this, everything you said is obviously stand, you know, it's great. I find it lengthens my day in a big, big way. So again, if you could do it in the morning, that probably is a bigger impact. If you can wake up before your day starts and work out, that it's all those feelings that Nero just talked about prolonged throughout the entire day. You're like, well, I've already done something so tremendous. I feel good about it. I can't wait for my next one. Oh, I'm sore, but that's, oh, it's a good feeling, right? but it really lengthens your day. If you wake up at nine or 10 or whatever it is, go to work, come back. Like I said, and I don't want to give this because it's not going to capture everyone, but the example is a lot of times you wake up, do your job thing until five, hang out for an hour or two, dinner, and then you're kind of done. And then your day just ends. And sometimes people can get into a cycle where they're doing the same thing every day until the weekend or whatever. And that can get depressing in and of itself, but that also shortens your day. If you work out, you have those feelings Nero just talked about, but you also feel like you have more time in the day because you've gotten that you were effective already. So now you're like, well, I'm going to enjoy sitting on the couch. 
or, mm. or checking emails or playing games. Shit, I already did it. I already did some stuff today. And I did work. I always start at the end of my day. But I think part yeah. of that is because I know myself and I am incredibly lazy after I've worked out. Like, I won't take the stairs. I'm like, so by doing it at the end of my day, I feel like I don't hold back throughout the day, if that makes sense. Like, oh, cool. I'm like, I like lift things and clean things and do my stuff. And then I'll go and work out and then. I'm done. Right. And then I just take a shower and go to bed and it's like the best sleep ever. But if I work out in the morning, I feel like I carry that around all day. I don't know how y'all do. It. I'm like tired for the rest of my day. I'm just like, no, mm. I'm not carrying these groceries up three flights of stairs. Are you kidding me? Elevator. One, one super important point too, is to find something that's fun and consistently available for you that you enjoy rather than copy someone's method. Like maybe they're jacked yeah. and fit and all this, and this is what they do. Doesn't mean you should copy that. You should create something, take some ideas from people yep. for sure. But like you're saying, if you do better in the evening and you can sustain that, mm -hmm. I would never try to persuade you to work out in the morning. <laughs> that would be a waste right. of my time and yours. Yeah. And, and like when you I said, first yeah. started working out, I used to get bored. Mm -hmm. And then what kind of helped me get into it was things like rock climbing. Cause it's like, you're solving a puzzle as you're doing it. So I never used to be like sitting on a treadmill for 30 minutes. I still don't like running on a treadmill. I'd no. rather run outside. How could anyone? But it like helped, it would help me instead of being like, I wasted an hour at the gym. An hour would go by. Cause I'm like, how do I climb this boulder? Dude, like this is the biggest, in my opinion, the biggest takeaway you could take away from this episode is just do something. Like for some people it's signing up for a co-ed soccer league with their friends or whatever. They're not big weightlifters. They don't like running unless it's under the disguise of kicking a ball around or something like that. Like just add that element to your life and then go from there too. Uh, which if you hear is kind of a piecemeal in each of our stories, like Nero was a former, you know, athlete in high school. And from there, his parents really encouraged him to be a runner and, and be multidimensional and just kind of keep that up. So he's kind of kept that in his life. Bronze has hit or missed gone, you know, gone or not gone to weightlifting, that kind of thing. But she found something that inspired her to get back into there. She has a positive outside that kind of stuff for me. It was like a part of my identity. So I just, you know, motivation at different times to, to keep that a part of me. But like, it doesn't have to be weightlifting. It doesn't have to be running. It doesn't have to be rock climbing. It could be swimming. I know people that just go to the pool and swim a bunch of laps. One of the mm -hmm. best things you can do physically as well. Join your local like HEMA league. That's the medieval warfare. Uh, yeah. You could, you could go, sure. you could, yeah. You could like literally prepare for Ren Fair. And like you learn how to use a short sword at the same time. I can personally vouch for the amount of calories you burn because that shit is really fucking hard. Yep. <laughs> There's Still a frontier free. that we haven't addressed yet. We're all kind of coming from a specific, specific spot. Dance is another one that can really get major benefits for people. There's a lot of cardio involved yep. in that. A lot of kind of space time relations and movement, footwork, things like that that would basically achieve all these same benefits. We haven't mentioned it, but it doesn't necessarily need to be a competitive sport nope. for it to be good for exercise. And it can start as basic as what Nero said, which is like the most basic advice, but it's huge. Just go out for a walk. And I, I strongly recommend setting um, a, 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 like a goal and then doing that. that. That's what works for me. Maybe that doesn't work for you as well. But for me, like if I just amorphously, I'm like, I'm going to walk more, then it doesn't ever happen. But if I go every day I'm going to walk for 45 minutes, then I will do it. And obviously if that day happens where I just couldn't because I had to travel or something like that, it's on my mind and hopefully I make a change. Uh, anyways, we're getting too specific on that. But my point is like, I, I recommend setting a goal with that. If that works for you, that's what works for me. That um, ties into running for me. I yeah. tend to run a lot more if I've signed up for a race. So if I say I want to run this, half marathon, then leading up to that, I'm motivated because I want to post a good time that I'll be proud of, as opposed to like you're saying, I'm going to run more. It doesn't quite get the fire going as much. Nope. Mm -hmm. I think that's why a lot of people report more benefits with personal training. I don't necessarily, well, I'm sure it does help to have someone there to make sure you're doing everything correctly. But I think some of it is that commitment that you've made that you have to be there at this time. And I guess like my little piece of little tidbit of wisdom would be, um, you know, make that time for yourself and think of it as a form of self-care. So try to find something you enjoy. Mm. And I know there's always somebody that's like, I don't enjoy it. Think of it like, like, like Nero said, like almost, um, 
almost like a, like a meditation or like 10 minutes of mindfulness, like going for a brisk 10 minute walk and maybe put on a podcast you really want to listen mm -hmm. to or music you really enjoy and take that as like 10 minutes to, for yourself, like, you know, like you deserve that. And if you give yourself that time a couple of times a week, think of it as like your spa day. Yep. You, you'll, you'll commit to it and you'll do it because it's something you're looking forward to and not something that you're dreading. For a lot to of people, I know. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. To expand on her point about a personal trainer, also just having a buddy system of having yeah. another friend who goes to the gym with you, it offsets a lot of that. You know how you have your swings of some days you have good energy, other days you really don't want to go. If you have one or two friends or even more than that who are counting on you to show up, it's a lot harder to not show up. So we're social creatures. We care about what each other think. Social pressure can be a good thing in a way where it's like, ah, I don't really want to go. Are you injured? Are you physically injured? No, I'm oh, yeah. not injured. Okay, let's go. And you get out the door and by the end of it, you feel a lot better. So it's, I, I was raised Christian. I'm not anymore, but there's a passage about how a cord of three strands is not easily broken. Mm -hmm. If you can get a set of people who all hold each other accountable and support each other, it's much more difficult to break. Yep. And that is, I think there's a different couple, there's a few different ways to achieve that, which was mentioned just to reiterate this though. If you pay for a trainer, if you're paying that person, they get paid no matter what, by the way, right? Unless you cancel like way in advance. Oh, yeah. So mm -hmm. your ass is committed most of the time. And, it, and I, I know so many people that are like, I don't want to go today. I've got so much to do, but they're like, but that person's $85 a day. So yeah. I'm going, I'm not going to waste that money. And then for Nero, and this is a little bit more of a luxury, but if you have someone that you can continuously be like, we're going Monday, Wednesday, and Friday of every week. That's that nice fallback is like, gosh, I'm kind of tired today. But that person's like, yep, picking you up at six. And you're like, yeah, okay. Yeah, I guess I'm going. Um, that's <laughs> huge. And it's also just, for me as a gym rat, that's also the best way to lift is that person that can help you go to fail and stuff like that. But like I said, it's not very doable for everyone. So if mm -hmm. you can find that, that's great. Um, let's get through the and couple. And also, oh, go ahead. If, you, if you can afford a trainer, I cannot stress this enough. Find a trainer that's a good fit for you. Just because somebody has a certification and, and is qualified to be a trainer does not mean that your personalities will mesh. It's almost like the same thing with therapy. I always say find a therapist that fits mm. for you. You should interview therapists the way you interview like a date almost, you know, oh, like wow. there's there's different there's different types of things for different people. Trainers the same way. If you have a trainer that does not understand what you're looking for, some people like to go to the gym and get their ass fucking beat. They wanna they wanna have that experience. Other people like me, I don't like being yelled at. As you could tell from my very zen, when someone's like, come on, you got this, three more. I'm like, hell no. My trainer is super chill. She knows that internally I'm flaying myself, so she doesn't need to, and she lets me get in my zone. Make sure you find a trainer that fits what you want and not like, like don't, th don't have one bad experience with one trainer and think that that's the universal experience. They run yeah. the whole gambit. I would just... prefer yelling personally. Sure. I'm, <laughs> I'm lifting by myself right now, but that was my culture growing up. So I'm used to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A lot of people like that, but I, I was like at the gym last week and, um, <laughs> I told this story on my stream and it was like crazy. There was, um, a girl, I, I was just getting in warming up on the row machine. There's a girl on the squat rack next to me and the trainer's like, come on, you got this. It's easy. Three more. She threw the weight down. She's like, it's easy for you. It's not easy for me. And Good everybody for her. was just, and she, like at that tone, and all of us were just like, and the trainer was like, <laughs> and I was like, T she had that shit pent up. And the way she like threw the weight down, I was like, I, this bitch, she got beat this dude up. Like, nice. So some people do like that, like, come on, that's easy. You got this. And other people are like, it's not easy. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> That's kind of funny just as a like professional side for the trainer. You should probably pick up on that before the client explodes. Like if they're not responding right? to the yelling. Yeah. Like you'd think there'd be tells like on the way that like her eye twitching of like, okay, maybe yeah. stop saying it's easy to her. That's pretty funny. <laughs> uh, let's get through the, the final few few notes here. And then so just as a reminder of the chat, if you guys have questions, be ready to ask them. We did want this to be pretty chat oriented as well to try and catch all some of the questions you might have. But uh, let's go through a couple more here, Nero. So medium and long-term benefits of exercise, body composition is a phrase that I think should be used more. A lot of people have a very particular idea of what they want their body to look like. They'll say, I want to lose fat. 
and they'll say, I want less fat to be here and here. Ectomorph. You can't really direct that in the way that you think you can. If you want your abs to show, it's not about doing crunches. Your abs are already there. They're just hidden. <laughs> so that's what I tell it should everybody. be more it should be more of a kind of holistic, I want my body to be more fit in general, and then pursue that. The the shape will kind of take care of itself, but everyone has a unique shape they're working with and different stat gains. So you can't expect to have a certain body type as someone else and your body's going to look like them if you work out like them. Like the difference between the two of us, we're different body types like classes. Yeah. So it doesn't matter really what I do. It's a totally different ball game. So That's body composition and then energy levels as well. When you work out, you're spending energy. But if you've worked out consistently, it's like your car engine is just stronger. Mm -hmm. Your cardiovascular system is more powerful. You can pump blood through not just your muscles, but also through your brain. The brain, to give you a quick fact, consumes 20% of your daily calorie intake, and it's 2% of your mass. So it's very, very taxing. So if your whole system is more powerful, then that means your brain is more enriched with blood and oxygen, so you can kick ass at your intellectual tasks. Hmm. That's why they say mind strong, body strong. The opposite is also true. If your body is strong, your mind has more kind of disposable energy that it can use. Did not, you're blowing my mind right now. And then the, the long-term benefit for exercise, I think, is confidence. Confidence in that by exercising, you have a track record of things you have achieved. You've completed stuff. I went to the gym. I did this set of exercises. I ran this race. I had this as my max for bench press. You have that for the rest of your life. So confidence isn't really something you just choose to have. I feel like it's strongest if it's based on evidence of what you've already done in the indisputable way. I remember I did this. I learned a lesson from this. I have this as part of my experience. And I'm confident because of that. Yeah. You got anything to add about Ross? Both our minds are just blown. Yeah, no, I was thinking about it. And it's like, for me, I think when you when you were talking about like body composition, that was something that I really struggled with up until I started weightlifting and I got to enjoy that. But like, you know, your bo human bodies are weird. There's no such thing as localized weight loss. You're never going to lose weight from just your waist or just your hips or just your calves. Like everybody's body is so wildly different. And I struggle with that. Um, mm -hmm. When I first started lifting, I had, I had to actually go up in pant size, even though overall I lost body weight. And part of that is like, especially with women. So if there's any ladies in chat and you've dealt with this, like the way our bodies are, the human, the female anatomy is, is that when we lose weight, sometimes our body goes into this freak out mode and starts storing it on the sides of your legs, like your saddlebags. Mm -hmm. And it's like, part of it is I think something to do with having babies. I don't know what it is, but you, your body is weird. And so it, it almost like focusing on the shape of it is probably like the worst thing you can do to yourself, honestly, because there's just some girls are going to be skinnier than you no matter what. <laughs> <laughs> not a whole lot you can do about it. So it's better to just like embrace the, for me, lifting helped. I get that it's not for everybody, but for me having muscle tone and being able to see like how much stronger I've gotten has helped with realizing I'm still not smaller than other girls, but I bench more than them. I squat more than them. And I deadlift more than them. And for yeah. me, that has helped. But I think anatomically, I'm just like, I'm a little bit bigger and that's just how I'm always going to be probably. I, I would say uh, obviously not being an expert on the female fitness because I'm not a woman myself, but someone very close to me went through kind of the gambit. They were training for pageants and they were always a fairly fit person anyways, but it was very fascinating to see for that person what worked for them and what didn't work for them at times because sometimes they would diet and it would be like a little bit extreme, but not like crazy diet. Like we're not talking about like I'm calorie cutting to 1200 and I'm not eating X, Y, and Z. Like it was just more of a like less sugar, not this, that kind of thing. But the way the body would respond was really interesting uh, because they weren't the biggest in weightlifting. They were doing more cardio. They were doing more dieting, but then they would retain kind of like looser skin and a little bit more body weight or uh, water weight in other parts of their body that they previously didn't have. So for them training in a pageant or for like a bikini competition, that was actually like less desirable 
um, body weight to lose because it ended up looking not as good aesthetically. Mm-hmm. But, but it was really interesting because then what they found was that for them, like yoga really worked really well in terms of like overall toning, but also it helped with their mental fitness. And then um, their body just responded to that better. Like it, it's obviously not bulking muscle or toning even as well as perhaps weightlifting would for most people. But for this person, their body responded just a lot better. So I think the takeaway for this is a like Nero was saying, don't lock on to body types and being like, well, listen, I'm five foot six, uh, and I, my whole life, my whole life, I've weighed 145 pounds. But it's it's Arnold Schwarzenegger that I'm really desirous of. So I'm gonna aim for that six foot three, six foot four, 265 pounds of raw muscle, and that's that's kind of where I want to end up at in the next year and a half. You're setting yourself up for for a lot of failure. At the same time, you can put on a lot of muscle. You can be very defined. You can be very powerful. But when you set like specific goals and anything less than that's a failure, I think it's really hard to do that. Um, for some people that works, you know, you can try for it, I guess. Uh, but for me, even just using my personal example, I've always been fairly thick. Like I'm just kind of, I'm just a stocky guy. Like I'm never, there is no version of me that walks this earth with a rippling six pack abs and, and I'm 195 pounds. Like I think if I really tried and cut calories and dieted, I think my frame would sustain something like 220, 230, uh, about that. Anything less than that, and it's like Skeletor time, and, and my body's going to be fighting me really bad. Um, as it is right now, I'm like I'm 240, 245, somewhere in that ballpark. So I'm a lot less than I've been in the past. But I don't. Uh, my calorie, my daily calorie intake is around 2200, 2300. And then uh, I work out every day, so I'm ex- I'm expending more than that. But my body just boop, maintains this, and I'm happy with where I'm at, and I'm actually improving every day. So for me, that's very good. But the point is, if I was ever like, damn it, summer, uh, September 2019, it's six pack or bust. It's going to happen. It's going to be bust, my friends. It's simply not going to happen. Uh, How tall are I, you? Six foot. Okay, so I'm the same height as you, and mm-hmm. I'm 160. Yeah. So I'm trying to get to 165 of muscle, and that's hard for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've had, I've had friends like that. They're like, they have to just eat everything in sight to put on weight. Um, and and the funny thing about me is I actually don't really put on weight. Uh, I can eat a whole pizza tomorrow, and I'll be the same thing. Um, but if I don't work out, you know, the lines on my body kind of ooh, loosen up. It, it loosens up a little bit. Yeah, become a little fluffier. I think like that also is this like a slight segue, but not yeah. really, but. Like, the, I'm just going to get on my soapbox about this for a second. Guys, don't give into fad diets. Like, everybody's body is different. And I'm, I'm, and I'm not saying keto, like, is bad. Keto works for some people very, very well. But I've talked to, like, licensed nutritionists. One of my good friends, David Nett, is a, is a licensed, or his wife is a licensed nutritionist. And I talked to her about it. And, and the thing is, is, like, some of us, if we do keto and you go to the gym, it destroys your gym performance. Mm-hmm. Um, and some of that is like ethnicity. Like some of us have had 6,000 years of eating rice and beans. And so the idea of cutting out carbs is like your body's going to go into, into shock with that. So um, at the end of the day, it's simple math. If you burn more than you eat, you are going to lose weight for the most part. That's just yeah. how it works. And what calories you're putting in doesn't really matter <laughs> unless you start getting into saturated fats and stuff like that because that will clog your calories or your arteries. But, you know, ultimately you should eat what feels good to you to eat. And by that, I mean, you know, like what makes you feel better in the day. Obviously, if you eat a bunch of dairy and then you have a brain fog for three hours, that's probably not good. But if you have a bunch of rice and beans and then you hit your best PR ever and like, you know, you, you crush all your gym goals, you probably shouldn't cut out all of your carbs and eat nothing but fats to force your yeah. body into ketogenesis because that's not always good for you. And I like this. This goes hand in hand with what Neuro said earlier, too, which is I found to be so incredibly true. And, and this is kind of the topic we're on, but everybody, it's different. And that's why to me, you know, it, this is almost like the D.A.R.E. program where if you if you like say to everyone like all drugs are bad. Everyone's going to kind of roll their eyes. Or if you say like marijuana leads to cocaine, which will kill you after you're a prostitute. Like everyone kind of rolls their eyes like, no, that's not the case. So when you say like all fad diets are bad, which is not what you're saying, but people mm-hmm. hear that, the answer is no, that's not the case. Like the mm-hmm. diets, they can work, but the absolutely important part for you to take away from this is that they're different for everyone. So somebody's body would respond to keto or keto or whatever, like the worst, it would be like the worst thing in the world. They'd actually fucking fall over and just not be healthy. And then for other people they are like, I lost 
20 pounds in a month yeah. and it was super healthy and it actually my my body responded incredibly well so it is going to be different someone in the chat um moss neotech prototype very aptly said consult a nutrition expert before obviously that's also that extra length for sometimes they're like yeah i'm 500 dollars an hour and you're like eh, nah, i'm not gonna pay that research it at least use the internet something and then you can actually try stuff out too like don't walk on to a diet and be like six months hardcore of this otherwise i fail and i hate myself it's like well ease into it try it uh but dieting is a, is a big part um for a fitness for a lot of people and i guess we're kind of on the subject so i'll touch on it real quick for myself but like i don't really diet uh i watch my calories i try to eat healthy uh we talk maybe we'll talk about travel a little bit but that's when it's really hard but for me personally um i go see movies like once a week and i go to restaurants once or twice a week which is again not super healthy but that's just kind of the traveling lifestyle that i lead so it just kind of happens and last year and years in the past, that would be like a soda at the movie, maybe two sodas at dinner. And then at home, I'd like to treat myself and I'll get a Coke or something like that. And that's like four sodas in a week. That was a lot. And it was uh, it was actually, I never owned soda. I never have like a 12 pack at home or whatever. But like I said, it's like three or four a week. That's a lot of fucking sugar. Um, and I didn't realize this, but it really impacted my health quite a bit. Like a, it was just a lot of sugar that I was intaking. So the, this is the second time I've done it. I did it a couple of years ago, but I actually just said, nope, no soda for the year. And, that, and I actually ended up losing like 20 pounds, which I, I always say is crazy because a lot of weight off of my body. But what I'm trying to tell people is I'm not a guy who had a 24 pack in my fridge at all times and I'm constantly drinking soda. It really snuck up on me. Um, so that was one of the things that worked for me as a diet, if you will. But it was just kind of like a, that's a luxury thing. I really like my soda when you go see a movie. Like how the fuck do you drink a bottle of water when you're watching a movie? I think that's so stupid. But I'm doing it because the other thing here, too, is what I found that works for me is a year, maybe it was two years ago, I was like, I'll have a soda a week or I'll only have a soda when I go see a movie. But then all of a sudden it's like now I'm having a Coke with dinner because why not? I really like Pepsi with uh, Panda Express. And then you've had now you're breaking your stuff. So it just didn't work. So I'm, I'm kind of the kind of guy that's like it's got to be all or nothing, I guess. So for me. No soda this year. That's what worked. That's brave. Hard. It was I'm hard. like it that too. Easy. Where once in a while, I never really drink it at home. But once in a while, I'm like, yeah, but what else am I going to drink with my pizza? Water? Milk? Yep. Clearly so. <laughs> so we talked about this on the Pylon show on one of my appearances. I'm like artosis. I can't burp. So if I drink <laughs> soda, which is very carbonated, I get very like my whole inside is like messed up so i i don't like soda for that reason yeah that's so crazy you can't burp no there are dozens of us <laughs> <laughs> i looked it up and part of the reason this is it's not researched in the sciences because it's not a medically threatening condition but there are a bunch of people who are like yeah this happens to me too i just gurgle sometimes <laughs> it's a thing it's actually a, a nerve that's problem so cool. that, the nerve that allows you to have the burp response there's is like a nerve. messed up. Oh, wow. We have lots of nerves. Well, I, I didn't know there was a burp nerve. But... Yeah, well, there's a nerve that's involved in that process, and for whatever reason, mine's messed up. You're not so, missing yeah. out, to be fair. Uh, kind of. I think a burp can be satisfying. You get closure for the air that's in your body, kind of like at once. I guess you wouldn't like... know, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a hard life. Yeah. A lot of people, this is kind of going back to the diet one, they will ask me what my diet plan is, thinking that that's a good starting point for their diet. My diet basically had its origins in my parents had oatmeal for us for breakfast every day. And that's just my morning. I have oatmeal with a sliced banana. That's it. It's very simple, pretty healthy, and it's the biggest meal of my day. Yeah. And then I have rice, beans, and corn with some protein like eggs for lunch and then something like yogurt or whatever for dinner. But when I was building the stream, I had no money. So we're trying to have a super economical uh, breakfast, lunch and dinner. And I lived with a diabetic. So I have a very good sense of like how sugar affects the body and we would just buy the same food. So I was kind of eating like a diabetic, even though I didn't have to. And that gives you a good sense of how your body processes food. The longer it takes for your body to process it, usually the better job it does integrating it so the flip side would be from soda something like a wheat bread that has a lot of grains that your body has to break down first and then you can get the glucose out of that 
as opposed to the liquid goes in, sugar just hits your bloodstream immediately. Mm-hmm. For me, I do intermittent fasting because I have to, I would much rather have a long fasting period. Like, so I fast like 16 hours out of every day. And then a lot of that I'm sleeping. And then I have an eight hour window in which I I feast. But for me, I would rather have two very large satisfying meals than have like a bunch of small ones. So like my breakfast today was like two cups of yogurt and a giant bowl of oatmeal and I'm going to go lift. So like, it's going to be, it's going to be fantastic. But like, I, like when neuro describes his meals i'm like (laughs) like, it's very healthy that's amazing (laughs) it's super healthy but i'm like i would starve you know everybody's different i have like protein bars and shakes between that and stuff but that's Mm -hmm. the the core of it i get hangry if i don't eat for three hours yeah right so like different different people different like you know bodies process food differently i feel really great when i'm fasting like i'm hungry but i feel very mentally alert I feel like active, ready to go. Like it's like the most active I am in my day is when like I have, I've been fasting for like 14 hours. It's just like, I'm sharp as fuck when I wake up in the morning. I I bound out of bed. Whereas if I eat a heavy meal and go to sleep, good luck getting me out of bed in the morning. It's like a totally different animal. For a piece of StarCraft evidence, my mechanics just go to shit whenever I get hungry. I'll misclick my army like multiple times, unbind everything. And it's like, what is happening? I look at my OBS uptime. I'm at four hours and it's like, oh, yeah, that's why. I have a funny like out of body experience because I'm I'm very introspective, just generally speaking. But when I'm when my blood sugar is low and I'm mad mad because I haven't eaten for a while, I can see myself not liking something that I should be okay with. Like, I'm going to be like, like, like my a good example. And hopefully you can't hear this because my roommate. My roommate says hello the same way every single day. And if I haven't eaten, I can feel myself be like, hmm. <laughs> mm. but, but then I think to myself and I'm like, who the, he could say it however the fuck he wants. Why, why is that bothering you? And I'm like, I haven't eaten in like six hours. Okay. <laughs> but that's when I know. That's when I, it gets so ridiculous. And I'm like, all right. You probably heard that. I'm going to have to apologize later i am annoyed by every <laughs> item in my experience right yeah now. that's that's what happens and like i don't say anything i don't like smash a fucking porcelain doll or something like that but it's just in my head I'm like, that's unreasonable jeff it's on, that's on you man you gotta be better but if there was a porcelain doll you could totally smash i it. could smash it yeah uh we i think we got to wrap up pretty soon because i think bronze mm-hmm. does you have some working out to do so how much time do you got bronze about a couple minutes just a couple minutes so mm-hmm. let's Let's act. I mean, Nira has other fantastic notes. We'll have to either save it for a future conversation or whatever, but I want to wrap up the show. Try to ask some conversations or questions rather to the, the chat because we did state that as a intent. And we'll have, just have to have Nero back on at some that point. Was, that rounded off all my notes. I did have a little motivational, inspirational speech thing. While they're asking but... their questions, please give your speech then. You can't write a speech and not, not give it, yeah. Okay. So... This is kind of a, an aspect of my broadcast I've been trying to work in more. Very inspired by like Lord of the Rings style battle speeches that really get you going and stuff. And Very this good. is specifically dedicated to people who haven't really started fitness yet. Uh, for people who already have the ball roll and you know your method, things like that. But this is kind of for the, I haven't done the couch to 5K, let's go. So, <clears throat> human habits are like inertia. Those at rest stay at rest. Those who move will improve. And if you're needing some inspiration, listen up, and this might light your fuse. Within every person, there resides a warrior who can run and jump and fight because you are descended from survivors who withstood nature's ferocious bite. Momentum is yours for the taking if you get off the fucking couch. Throw your excuses into the garbage and figure a workout plan out. You're not getting younger and time speeding by. You'll never reach your goals if you don't get up and try. Suit up, show up, and focus up. Be the better, stronger you. Exercise brings expression and progress and is what your heart, lungs, mind, and soul need from you. Very well said, sir. Yes, I think that should motivate at least a few people. Hopefully my favorite day. line was the get off the fucking couch. <laughs> yeah. I do feel like we should run into battle with that, but then I'm like, well, you mentioned couch though. So I think it's just working out. 
Um, what are okay? So a couple of questions, real quick. I'll field it to you guys, or whoever wants to answer it. What are your thoughts on breaking through exercise plateaus? Does anyone else want to take it? I'll take it. Take it. I'll take it. Okay. Uh, learn to enjoy the work. Um, be less results. I, if if you want a little bit more on that, I highly recommend checking out mine and Jeff's uh, talk about motivate motivation versus discipline. Um, learn to enjoy the work. Learn to enjoy that time. And trust that your body is taking the time that it needs. And eventually, we all hit plateaus, whether it's weight loss, whether it's it's strength building, whether you can't hit that certain number on your bench press and you've been trying for four weeks. Um, trust the process. Uh, enjoy the work. That's not to say don't do some research because sometimes if your calorie intake is too low, your body will start to hoard like whatever fat you have left. So sometimes eating a little bit more to start the weight loss process again and then jump popping it back down might help you, but it learn to enjoy the work. That would be my, my, my little tidbit on yeah. that. The way I break it down, we made up a cute thing. Three S's. You have different energy levels on different days. You can't expect to break the plateau on any given day. I think of it as survive days, sustain days and surpass days. Some days you feel like shit, maybe you're hungover, you're just not feeling well, you didn't rest well. You're just trying to make it through. That's fine. Just survive. Other days you're kind of on your B game. It's your average thing. You do your average stuff. You don't lift more, you don't run faster, but you get through a workout. That's good. Good job. And then you have the surpass days. For whatever reason, you got a good night's sleep. You just slept solid. You woke up, you felt kind of fresh. You felt pretty excited to do the thing. You do an extra rep that you hadn't done before or you have more weight on and you do that. That's awesome. Just be okay with that rhythm. Some days are bad, yeah. some days are average, some days are good. The plateau will be broken if your method is good and you stick to it. That's okay, awesome. we're only gonna ask one more uh, and then we're gonna close out the show, but I'm gonna encourage everyone to please post comments in the YouTube section and I at least will go through each and every one of them and give my best answer, but we'll keep the conversation there going. We've ran short on time because this conversation was wonderful, but it went long. Nero already touched on this a little. How important is fun for each of you when working out? I, for example, couldn't imagine going to the gym. Exercise needs to be a fun activity like surfing or kendo practice for me. Any advice on how to find something you love as a workout for those that haven't already? I think we talked, we, like you said, you touched on this a little bit, but anything to add, I guess? Mm, I would say a lot of days aren't particularly fun. I think a lot of it is it, creating the habit where it's not quite as... Um, fought through by your willpower, you have more of a, a rhythm and a track that you've driven some grooves into a little bit. So I'll wake up and I'm naturally kind of looking for my shoes and my workout shorts and stuff. Yeah. And I feel like that's just a normal part of my day. So finding what is fun is one step, but it's also okay to not love every single workout. Sometimes you're kind of just, this is my life. I'm doing this. I know this is good for me. I'm not yeah. thrilled with it today, but it kind of goes back to that survive point of not every rep is fun. A lot of workouts are very unfun, but you see that that's worth it in the bigger picture in your life. Bronze? I would say find something that's sustainable for you. So even if you enjoy, like, let's say you enjoy an activity, like I, like, for example, this is a really good one. I really enjoy hiking. It's how I started mm. working out, but the weather here it sometimes just doesn't allow for it. it. You know, if the trails are snowed over or they're washed out because of the rain showers, I can't do it. So therefore I have to change what I'm mm -hmm. doing, like, because it's just not feasible. So uh, I would say try everything. There's, there's almost like cheaper trial memberships at any gym, whether it's a rock climbing gym or a cycling gym. And the second thing I would say is if fun is truly important to you, try to make it a social activity. So mm. figure out what your friends are doing. If your friends are skating, if like I had a friend who was in the roller derby and, and like that motivated all of our entire friend circle to start doing roller derby, try to take your cues from your friends. If there's somebody you really like, maybe talk to them about joining them and then I'll naturally become fun because it's a social activity for both of you. Yeah. The only thing I would add to that, I agree with everything they said is sometimes you can pseudo redefine what fun is for you. So maybe the workout itself or what you're doing for a workout isn't explicitly fun every time, but you know that the end result of you looking better, feeling better and feeling more productive is what's fun for you. Uh, same as Nero for me, going to the gym every single day. Some days it feels amazing. Other days it's like, geez, I haven't done cardio in three days. So this is going to actually really suck. 
but I, I still go because I want to be the person that doesn't get winded when they run through the airport mm -hmm. or like, I like the way it trims me down and makes me feel more svelte. So that's the more fun aspect for me. But for other people, if it stops you from going to the gym, then I totally agree. Like find something that gets you just doing stuff. That's the, the most important takeaway from this. Uh, but like I said, this is amazing. I think we could have done a three hour episode, to be honest with you. We have so much to say and, and uh, but time is limited as these people have lives. So we're going to wrap up here. Let's uh, start with our first ever deadpan diary guest, Mr. Neurozerg. Thank you so much for coming on. Uh, he's a streamer on Twitch. It's is, is it Nero or is it Nero Zerg? Nero. It's just Nero. It's just that yeah. right there. You should definitely check him out. He's a StarCraft 2 streamer, but like I said, if you like this conversation, it's that the whole time. He's just a wonderful interactive streamer with his community. Nero, what are you up to? Where, where can people check you out and stuff? So the massive big announcement uh, for me personally is I'm a Twitch ambassador now. I was flown out to the HQ recently. And a lot of that was kind of connecting the dots with other broadcasters who also had a, a mission of positivity in the scene. And it was Twitch trying to highlight people from different categories. So instead of like the ninja, the doctor disrespect, the lyric who are the height of Twitch, this was more the breadth of mm -hmm. Twitch. So that was really refreshing. Twitch HQ is amazing. They taught us some cool stuff, but moving forward, it's a, a very bright future. My personal goals, I'm trying to be a big streamer i'm working on that path starcraft i know is not the most popular game but it's a game that i feel really expresses who i am as a person and it's what i love so kind of finding that angle and being able to continue to expand and grow and kind of spread this mission of mindfulness positivity and respect i want to make respect cool toxicity in gaming is annoying it's old respect is the new good shit. so buckle up Buckle up, I like it. That's that good. Bronze, thank you for pushing the limits of your schedule, but what are you up to? What do you what do you got coming on? Hi, hello, I'm that bronze girl. I'm a super early morning streamer because I'm a morning person. So if you're like one of those people that's like, oh man, I would like a morning talk show, that's me. I start every stream with like a 30 minute to an hour talk show and then I play different games. I'm a variety caster. Um, this year I'm really stretching the boundaries of what I'm doing in terms of Twitch. Like I'm, I'm taking more chances on myself. I feel like I've produced a lot of great content for other companies and now I want to do that with, for myself. So I'm actually starting a D and D podcast. Um, I have a weekly comic book talk show and I'm also starting a weekly streamed RPG. So it's like the year of me actually creating things for myself instead of other people. It'd be kind of cool. De and honestly, Deadpan Diaries is kind of like was part of that, like mm -hmm. kicking off things, do like creating content, like, you know, with people I enjoy and content, I believe. So, yeah, awesome. like Nero said, probably it's not it's not Apex, probably not going to blow up overnight, but consistency and with your help, I, too, can become Captain Planet. <laughs> to whittle them down, but just being there all the time. Yes. <laughs> Uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in. You, you obviously know about my channel and stuff. Just please support Bronze and Nero and, and everyone we have on. Um, I don't know that we'll do the Q&A episode next, but we'll come up with a topic and, and talk about it. Maybe it is the Q&A episode. We'll see. I love that ambiguity. It makes it just confusing enough that it's interesting, I guess. Um, but we should be on a pretty regular schedule of keeping the show going and, and uh, check us out. It's on Sound. It's on all the podcast stuff, Cobra Advertise. It's on YouTube. Like I said, ask your questions about fitness there. I will check it out, and maybe these guys will as well. We'll try to keep the conversation going. Uh, but thank you all so much. Really appreciate that. And that's episode five. We'll see you guys later.